My name is Michaela Hart, and today I'll be reading an excerpt from my short story, Hereat. When I was very young, I found a book in our basement called Rare and Beautiful Words. I pulled it from the shelf in my mom's long-abandoned study and took it to my bedroom, not because I wanted to read it, but because it was thick and I was short and in need of a footstool to reach my window latch. It failed, though, and when I fell from it, the cover bent and several pages fluttered open. The second my eyes locked on the first word, all thoughts of running away vanished, and I knew I was doomed. I was going to be one of those girls who was so caught up in words I saw them everywhere, in water and smoke and clouds. I was going to become an addict. And I did. Here's that word that started it all, the one I didn't quite understand but knew to be infallible. Hereat. A homesickness for a home to which you cannot return, a home that maybe never was. The day my mother died, I went for a walk and found myself on the sidewalk in front of Sadie's house, where I hadn't stood in over a year. My legs carried me there easily, instinctually. I stood there for a long while, in front of the place I once called a home, and thought back to everything that shattered that word for me and Sadie. And am Kara, a person with whom you can share your deepest thoughts, feelings, and dreams, a soul friend. I met Sadie when I was nine and a quarter, and she was nearly ten, on the swing set of the playground on Appleton Street. It was rusty and usually abandoned in favor of the new playground on Main, so it was mostly occupied by people looking to exchange packages for cash or shoot up on a Friday night. That day, though, I sat on the far left swing waiting for my mom, who was supposed to pick me up from school, but was probably passed out on the couch instead. But what was Sadie doing there? Sadie, who obeyed even the crossing guard straight through high school? She was rebelling in the only way she dared, running ahead of her mom. She stopped when she saw me and we both looked each other over, me in my black t-shirt and skinny too long jeans, her in a pleated skirt and perfect little braids. She said, you're dirty. I said, well, you're prissy. Her mom caught up with her then, but she too stopped when she saw me. It doesn't take a genius to know that something's up with the little girl all alone at a known drug sale site.